Welcome. In this part, in examine inquiry teaching. While inquiry teaching can be used in all curriculum areas, it is especially effective when in teaching science. Over the last two summers, I have attended a workshop to investigate inquiry teaching in math, science, and technology. The workshop provided me the opportunity to foster my collaboration with other teachers and to examine my own teaching methods. Much of the work we did and much of what we discussed was open-ended. There was no right and wrong answer. I felt out of my element. How could there not be right and wrong? It was so contrary to how I had learned as a student. When I thought about teaching and learning strategies, inquiry seemed more like organized chaos than teaching and learning. Inquiry-based teaching provided students with engaging and enriching learning experiences that I needed to incorporate into my teaching, and I needed to encourage other teachers to do the same. Inquiry-based learning allows students the opportunity to investigate materials and ideas and develop their own understanding of bigger concepts. This form of learning requires the teacher to identify the big ideas she wants her students to know and understand by the end of the investigation. Then, the teacher needs to gather the materials that will aid the students in asking questions about the big ideas and topics. In some ways, inquiry-based learning seems obvious. It allows students to ask questions, investigate materials, and then move on. However, to some, Inquiry learning appears to be just plain, but inquiry is so much more than just play. Inquiry teaching provides an opportunity for teachers to guide students through investigations in which the students are encouraged to ask more open-ended questions and formulate testable hypotheses. For many students, asking questions is their true talent. If you ever listen to a group of children playing, they are consistently asking questions to gain an understanding of the world around them. This is the true basis for inquiry-based teaching. Let students ask questions and investigate the answers to those questions. As I began to look into inquiry teaching, I found several common themes and suggestions. The first was to understand that inquiry learning is innate. It goes back to the basic instincts all humans have to learn. We ask questions and we explore to find out how the elements of our surroundings work. Next, it is imperative that once students investigate, they must be given an opportunity to discuss and reflect on their findings. Processing the information discovered as part of an investigation is a critical part of inquiry. Finally, keeping a journal or notebook, just as real scientists do, allows authentic reading and writing to be incorporated into inquiry teaching and into the content areas. Trying any new teaching method can be challenging and a bit frightening. I have been finding it difficult to incorporate inquiry learning into my classroom because of time constraints, the fear of losing control, and concern that the students will not grasp the overlying purpose of the lesson. Inquiry lessons can seem chaotic at best, with all students investigating and exploring what they are interested in learning as opposed to a highly structured teacher-directed activity. Many teachers, myself included, feel as though any administrator walking by a room would assume the teacher lacks management skills when an inquiry lesson is occurring. However, as with any lesson in any content area, inquiry skills need to be modeled and taught Students need to be given the freedom to inquire and investigate, but the teacher also needs to step in to help guide students' questions. Many times, students ask simple questions that can be answered yes or no. However, in inquiry teaching, students need to investigate questions that are more open-ended. Teachers play an important role in facilitating this type of questioning. By asking some leading questions, students can begin to revise their thinking and deepen their understanding of the overlying science ideas. The purpose of inquiry teaching is to work through a process of science, asking questions, developing hypotheses, testing ideas, and processing the outcomes. When teachers are skilled in guiding students down this path, the resulting student learning 
can exceed the teacher's expectation. In inquiry learning and teaching, talking and processing information is the most critical part of the process. Students need to be given time to reflect on their discoveries and talk about those discoveries in groups. When you think about any career, employees attend meetings and discuss ideas and solutions to problems. Inquiry learning allows for the development of the thinking, the listening, and the processing skills that can be transferred to the workplace. While it will be years before the typical elementary student will experience these types of meetings, building the foundation for communication and problem-solving skills is the job of the teacher. By reflecting and discussing, more questions and curiosities may surface. In traditional teaching, we may dismiss these additional ideas in the interest of time. I know I have done it in my own classroom. When you are so pressed for time, there is an element of concern about completing the entire prescribed curriculum. As a result, I have often responded to a student's curiosity with a resounding, that's a great idea, but we need to move on. By focusing on the big ideas in science, inquiry teaching allows students to continue to investigate their questions and to develop a deeper understanding of the skills and principles of science. Finally, inquiry science is a way for students to imitate and become true scientists. All scientists record their findings in some manner. By having students utilize some sort of science notebook or journal, they are imitating scientists. These notebooks have multiple purposes. By having students use notebooks, teachers are providing an opportunity for authentic writing in the content area. While it may not be creative writing, it does allow students the opportunity to use vocabulary and structure note-taking. Notebooks can show how students progress in their learning. When starting to use science notebooks, student entries may be brief and nonspecific. However, as time progresses and students are encouraged to refer back to their notebooks and discuss with other students, they will become more specific and more detailed in their recording. This will show growth over time and be real evidence of student learning. Lastly, notebooks provide information to students. When conducting investigations, students record their findings in their notebooks. As time goes on, students can look back and read from their notebooks and use their previous discoveries and work to assist them with future investigations. Inquiry teaching, especially in science, can offer an alternative to the rote learning of the past. While it can require more preparation work on the part of the teacher, it can offer multiple rewards for the learning of the students. Do not let inquiry science scare you. I found by reading, taking inquiry workshops, and talking through ideas with other teachers using inquiry methods, I developed more of an understanding of inquiry learning and how to use it in my classroom. There are many books, articles, and research that describe how other teachers are making inquiry work in their classrooms and how successful it has been in enriching students' learning experiences. By doing research for this podcast, it has furthered my resolve to use inquiry-based learning in my classroom. Inquiry is natural, authentic, and rewarding for students. I would encourage all of my fellow teachers to familiarize themselves with inquiry-based learning and incorporate it into their teaching. Thank you for listening, and I hope you will consider inquiry teaching.